All right, our final story, a story that I'm very excited about, uh, is that Ajit Pai, I, I talked about this earlier in the, uh, in the in the last month, maybe, a couple weeks ago, something like that. Uh, fucking Ajit Pai is leaving the FCC, you guys. He's he's going to be donezo. He's, he is out of there, which is great, because uh, I fucking loathe Ajit Pai as a human being. He fucking sucks. Um, he is... There are just certain people. It's like Nikki Haley, Bobby Jindal, fucking Ajit Pai. Like these are people that they look at and they're like, these are solid members of the Indian community in America. And it's like, these are fucking monsters from the Indian community in America. Like you guys pick the worst of the fucking worst. It would be like saying, well, you, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer now represents all white people. Maybe an over exaggeration, but maybe not. Uh, you know who's a good representation of the Indian community that's in politics? Shama Savant. Shama Savant is a socialist council member in, in Seattle, Washington, that actually fucking pushed back on Jeff Bezos and made him pay more taxes. She actually fucking did that shit. And you know what she didn't do? Write a dumb fucking letter to him. She just put a law into place and was like, this is how we're going to fucking enforce it. And that's what she did. <laughs> anyway, uh, Ajupai should be hated by every fucking Indian person uh, because he is a tool of the telecom industry and a giant fucking piece of shit. And I'm super fucking pumped that he's leaving. Because fuck that guy. He he stole net neutrality from us. He made things way worse for the uh, on the internet. Uh, he because he opened things up to the telecom industry. There have been arbitrary data caps from Comcast during a fucking pandemic. Um, you know they're they're still charging people and yeah he he's he's a, a shit show of a human being. Uh, fight for the future, great organization. Fightforthefuture.com. Go check them out. Um, Evan Greer. They pointed out how awful pie has been to internet freedoms, right? It just in notion of everything that he's done has been against net neutrality. And then he comes out and he, and he basically is just like, you can do all the fun things you can do on the internet. You can shop and shop. Uh, you can, Oh, did I mention that you can shop? We're not putting any restrictions on Amazon. Uh, but if you are a small business and you want to open up your own uh, uh, shop on the internet uh, using various different tools, we are going to make that a lot more difficult. But you can still shop, you guys. And I have a giant fucking stupid mug uh, with Reese's Peanut Butter. The logo of Reese's. Reese's Peanut Butter should fucking sue him for uh, defamation because uh, he, is, he is not only shit on internet freedoms, but he's also shit on... Reese's by having a giant fucking mug and being that fucking detrimental to internet freedoms. Anyway, uh, the reason why net neutrality is important, if you guys don't know, I, I, I assume most of you guys do know, but just in case there's a couple that might not know, uh, is because it, you know, it, that's internet for everybody and it's available at the highest capacity to every person that gets the internet it is a, it is a, it is a right at this point uh we need it for various things especially during a pandemic when a ton of us are working from home um i'm live streaming that that happens on the internet you guys uh but you know comcast verizon some of these big major telecoms will throttle speeds and they'll say well you can have more speed if you pay for it a lot more um, and it, and that's essentially what they were trying to do. They were trying to make money and say, because the internet is uh, a utility and something that's absolutely necessary in our society right now. Uh, it should be a public utility. And I've talked about municipal broadband a couple different times. Um, Ron Placone does a, a lot on municipal broadband as well. He's worked with Fight for the Future um, he's sort of my go-to person on, uh, on municipal broadband. Uh, but it would basically make the, it, you know, it, it, the internet, a, a utility. And then if the internet sucks, uh, the city is responsible for it. So these elected officials that are so desperate to get reelected, if you have shitty internet and somebody can't download their porn, you bet your ass you're not getting fucking elected again, you know? So they become more responsible to us making things, making things like these a utility where the government has to be 
responsible directly to us is scary. That's why they go through the private industries. That's why uh, they prefer that sort of stuff so they can come out and make the platitude arguments of like, oh, man, Comcast, you guys really got to get your shit together. And then they get money from Comcast to be like, good job but looking like you're against Comcast and then letting us do whatever the fuck we want to do. Right now, we, we have kids that are sitting outside Taco Bells and Starbucks trying to do their homework because they don't have good internet at home because, you know, they're parents can't afford the $400 a month internet packages to get them top speeds to log into zoom and uh, to go on classes and download their homework from certain places. So it's become a necessity and Comcast throttling speeds, putting these adver uh, uh, arbitrary data caps and, and so on and so forth is essentially anti-education. So they hate kids. And this is how you create a failed state, right? This is how capitalism creates a failed state by commercializing everything, by putting a dollar sign on things that don't need a dollar sign to be put on. Controlling the internet in terms of profit and ensuring that kids can't do their homework and get the education that they deserve to get shows you how much of a failed state this really is. You're creating a a hostile educational environment for these kids by not helping them learn. Is that what Comcast wants to do? Comcast doesn't want kids to learn. I, from the looks of it, that's exactly what they are trying to do. Right now, uh, there are two Democrats that are up for, um, the chair position. Let me see if I can find their names uh, real quick. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Uh, Jessica Rosenworcel and Jeffrey Starks. I have no idea who these people are, but those are the two Dems that are um, that are up for the chairman position, the chairman of the FCC. Uh, or Biden will pick someone. And when he got nominated, you know, Joe Biden immediately went to a fucking Comcast dinner. That's what he did. Uh, and he wants to come out and say, oh, I'm for the f net neutrality and freedom of the Internet. And, you know, no censorship. People should be. But here we are where, you know, Facebook is censoring topics about the largest strike uh, across the globe and. You know, if you talk about anti-establishment topics, they don't show your videos to certain people. I didn't even get a notification on my own channel that I went live today. I had to go and dig around to find the video to share it. Um, I don't, you know, there's certain times when, when certain people will go live or they'll drop a video that I just don't see it. They just don't notify me. They, un they unsubscribe people from channels that happened the other day. I just saw uh, somebody posted that, that uh, YouTube had unsubscribed them from my channel. This happens all the time. Um, so Joe Biden is not for it. It's uh, not for a free Internet. Um, he is for a very restricted Internet. He is for uh, restricting the, the thoughts that go on the Internet. Um, so, you know, who who is he going to pick? Well, he's probably going to pick a fucking AT&T lobbyist next. Aja Pai was a Verizon lobbyist, so it's only fair that Comcast and AT&T get their lobbyists to be put on as the chair as the chairman of the FCC but it's okay guys this 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 pro corporatist uh chairperson that is probably going to do their best to get rid of net neutrality again um as they usually do even tom wheeler under obama was trying to get rid of net neutrality and he eventually backed away because there was a shit ton of fucking people against getting rid of net neutrality and they pushed back on him so hard. He was like, all right, I feel like this is a bad fucking idea where Ajit Pai just laughed in their face, lied on camera and did a fucking video about shopping like a teenage girl. Um, even this AT&T lobbyist was going to try to spin it to be like, well, we know we need to keep net neutrality. Uh, um, we, you know, less net neutrality is for the better, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it's okay. This person that's going to take away your internet freedoms uh, is going to be black, bisexual, 
have a bunch of tattoos, and they're going to be a big fan of anime. So, progress. Progress, you guys. That's Don't look at the Biden administration as anything progressive. This is another this is another way, you know, the dude the dude went to a fucking Comcast dinner. He has no standing on net neutrality to come out and say that he's pro net neutrality unless he puts restrictions on the fucking corporations. Not because he comes out and makes a fucking tweet about it. Is he going to put legislation behind it? Is he actually going to be a lawmaker? Let's look at some of your comments. Gay Shama Savant. Indeed, Holly. She's uh, she's pretty fantastic. If you haven't looked her up, I highly recommend uh, you guys looking up Shama Savant. She's fantastic. Uh, Joe Biden is going to replace him with the AT&T lady from those commercials. You know, telecom flow. <laughs> yes, I hope he does. That would be hilarious. It would be hilarious if the chairman of the FCC was uh was a fucking mascot uh no they hate poor kids yes uh and poor kids are the ones that are going to be struggling to get the internet in the first place uh, all these telecoms just hate anybody that that can't pay for for the internet themselves and pay the outrageous charges um that they're gonna that they're gonna put out there right the the, the throttling of speeds and all that sort of stuff that we just talked about um like water traded on the commodities exchange uh yeah another thing that should just be a public utility and not controlled by private industries. Uh, Josh, Joshua, thank you for watching, Josh. I, I hope you're doing well. Uh, they they listen to those who have no sense of patriotism because they effectively own countries and are not looking to make it uh, better to carve out much like a private equity firm. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, Jen, still working on fixing the internet in rural PA. It's a shit show that's compounded by a lack of cell towers. It's a handicap, especially during a pandemic. At my house, I have two cyber school and two being homeschooled, not to mention the safety of the lack of internet and cell towers. Uh, lack of internet contributes to lack of education for rural adult, adults as well as, as well, but I'm, I'm not sure what people in rural, what people in rural area, uh, I'm not sure they want people in rural areas educated. I agree with you. Um, uh, I, I do uh, I, I do think that they don't want people to be educated to the point of rural PA. I was in rural Iowa a couple of years ago. I was in Colfax, Iowa, which is outside Des Moines. Um, and uh, it, I, I could barely connect to the Internet. I could barely open up my Facebook or my emails, you know, um, let alone try to upload a video, try to do a live stream. Um, you know, and I went to a cafe and a video that normally would take two or three minutes to upload onto um, onto YouTube it took me four and a half hours. Uh, and the people of Colfax, Iowa, were incredibly lovely. They were very kind. I found a, a little diner uh, attached to a grocery store that was open at 6 a.m. So I showed up at 630 in the morning to try to get ahead on some work. And, uh, you know, I had a real tough time with the Internet. And I asked the woman, and she goes, yeah, it's just the way that it is. Sorry. Uh, and I was like, you know, that's not fair that these people and, – and then and then what do they get stuck on, right? Because they can't get alternative sources of education, alternative sources of news, so they're stuck on cable news. So they have to watch what the local news covers. They have to watch what Fox News, CNN, MSNBC talk about. The reason why the Internet is so con – controlled as much as it is by these telecom companies is because these telecom companies also have investment in, in some of the corporate media outlets and they don't want people to go and get alternative news that points out how corporate media is just a bag of dicks but trying to shove itself into your into every orifice of your body and you're like no I don't want the this bag of dicks anywhere near me and it's like yeah but these bags of dicks are really good you know and they keep trying to to you know do that but <laughs> uh, Joshua, if rural gets educated, it is harder to get them to fight the billionaire fights, uh, keep fellow working class people down by way of racism, et cetera. We're 
separated as we're fleeced by the monocled people. I like that we're calling them monocled people. Big fan of that. I think I'm going to start using that if that's okay, Josh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think the idea is to keep us separated, keep us uh, split apart, right? Everybody from the rural area talks about, oh, the city folk don't get the rural laugh. That's what they don't get. Um, and it, and it sucks. And, and, and that's part of the reason why it's like, I travel and tour these rural areas and, and talk about the issues that I talk about. Um, and you know, half the time th it's, they're very open-minded and understanding of things. And then half the time they want to kill me. Um, but that's partly because they're not educated beyond the mainstream. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Jesse, uh, wait, so steps back to where we started aren't the same as progress. <laughs> I know, right? Going back to a Biden administration, which is basically going to be like uh, a, a more Republican Obama administration, <laughs> if that's even possible. That's not progress. Holy shit. Uh, what a crazy thing to think. Um, honestly, I don't know if the average person can be trusted with the Internet. There are people who now believe that elites are draining kids to use them as youth serum. Uh, educating people isn't what the internet is best known for. I, I I agree with you, and I and I very much know some of the people who think that these uh, elites are kidnapping kids too. That's what the human trafficking uh, business is all about. I I I hundred percent agree with you. It it is it is. But part of that is like how much has that been manufactured, right? Um, I think people are desperate for a good villain and they think that they can kind of centralize around various so, so, this kind of gets a little complicated so i apologize if it's if it's scatterbrained but i do think that we're looking for a, a villain right somebody that we can say this is why the problems exist um when when the problems that exist are pretty much systemic uh and so they realize that oh it's a systemic problem and instead of going down to the thing of like, yeah, okay, it's it's against corporatism, it's against unfettered capitalism, it's against greed, they go, well, they're harvesting kids' brains to keep themselves younger forever, um, and and the and that and that goes on the internet, and conspiracy theories become you know this big thing on the internet rather than uh, rational, educated discussion. But but part of that is the way the internet is sold is that the internet is sold as not a, a use for education, not a, a, a tool that can be used to enlighten people, um, but as entertainment and what's more entertaining than conspiracy theories. So that's why it gets, um, it gets flooded up that way. I do believe that the internet is a tool that can educate and enlighten the human race that it, it, but it's, it is, it is a tool that much like many tools we are not using properly. Um, solid point, Jesse. There's there's problems. Uh, the problem is we're living in the embodiment of no child left behind. The manufactured ignorance and desperation uh, has them watching OAN for hours. Ha! <laughs> uh, Mark, uh, you talk about the the red house on Mississippi occupation in Portland. Not yet. I have to look into that. Uh, I think a friend of mine just uh, sent me some information about it. I haven't had the opportunity to. To, to look at that but but keep an eye out for that uh i think we're gonna we're gonna uh end things there um hey what's up everybody thank you guys so much for checking out this video if you enjoyed the content in this video make sure you like subscribe and share my content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh that the corporate mainstream media really wants to 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 address here so make sure you like share and subscribe uh sign up for my email list uh, uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Chris Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.